You can see this is how he puts the, the magnetism in. This one is not magnetized, so it doesn't stick at all. Right. So that'll have, in some cases, up to a mile of this wine. So around us here we have winding machines that are doing just that. They're distributing um, thousands of turns. Well hi guys, this is Seymour Duncan. I'm here with two of my Longtime friends and just fantastic musicians, you know, and uh, you'll recognize this guy. Well, wait a minute. I be, should I put the mustache back on? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, the mustache. We okay, forgot now, the mustache. Now, now you recognize me. <laughs> there we go. Okay. This is John Oakes from uh, back in uh, the East Coast, uh, Philadelphia. I guess you grew up, right? Yeah, I grew up in Philly. I was born in New York. Grew up in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And we have Mr. Paul Pesco, who is I've known for thirty some years. I yes. guess now. I mean, go he's back. still. He still looks like he's 22 years uh -uh. old. You know? I mean, the guy <laughs> makes me so, so sick here. Thank you. Know? you. I paid him too. Yeah. yeah. But um, they're here in Santa Barbara, and uh, we're just going to talk about just some fun stuff about history. And, and uh, when I first met John, uh, I was doing a live aid in Philadelphia, and uh, it was I remember it was like 98 degrees already at nine o'clock in the morning, and the first band that came out was uh, Judas Priest. <laughs> they were they were all in leather and they were like slushing across yeah, the stage. Crazy. It was like ninety degrees, right? Oh, it was, 92 oh, it was horrible. Humidity was JFK incredible. Stadium. JFK right? Stadium. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember they were spraying yeah. down the people with, with fire hoses. That's right. I was there with Madonna. Right. You with Madonna. With Madonna yeah, yeah. Paul was Madonna, and uh, uh, we were chatting, and uh, it was it, it was a great it was a fun time, you know. And and the neat part was like backstage watching, having everybody talking to everybody that had never even had a chance to meet each yeah, other. So all these trailers you know? were like in a big kind of That's circle. Right. And every, circle. All the bands were sharing trailers. That's right. Like, you know, you go and like yeah. Duran Duran would move out of one. Right. Like, yeah. uh, you know, Madonna or someone else would move yeah. in. <laughs> and I remember uh, Phil Collins flew over. For, he had just, he was in like, I don't know if he did the England one. He did the England one first. And in Russia over. or something. He was like, he, oh, right, right, right. And he hopped over. on the Concord Conqu or something. Yeah. Concord, yeah. yeah and yeah, he, he flew, flew over. over. Yeah, which was pretty neat. Crazy. And, uh, but uh, it, it was it's just a great time. But um, wow. but um, being back there, I was so. I mean, you guys have always been so great. And one of my biggest uh, fan, you know, just all the music you've got done with Daryl and everything, and uh, and then Paul with Madonna. And you worked with CNC CNC Music, music Factory. Music I've, uh, Factory. Man, I've played on Joni a lot Mitchell, of records. You know, and now you're touring. Yep. With Hall John Bias, I was. Uh, John Bias, yes. Bias, yeah, I've yeah, been touring with uh, on and off with Hall and Oates uh, since the nineties. So really, Paul's, yeah. Paul's like kind of from the folk to the funk. Yeah, folk yeah, to man. The funk, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, man. I, I think that's so I, so great, you know. And we were talking lucky. about. Um, uh, you have a new album out, CD. Yeah, and, yeah. I've been, uh, uh, I've been recording in Nashville, so my second album I recorded down there, and I just great. love it, man. I'm just I bought into the whole the whole community and. Uh, great community of musicians oh, and people. And they're so and supportive back there for you. Everybody's so know? great. Um, and so it's been wonderful. And uh, yeah. I've got a chance to play with uh, some of my uh, heroes from Bluegrass and from well, Sam Bush, Roots guys like Sam that. and Jerry Douglas. Jerry Douglas. Douglas. Mike yeah. Henderson from the Steel Drivers. Uh, I couldn't find any good players. No, I couldn't find yeah. any good players. Oh, so. And you have Michael Rhodes playing bass. <laughs> Michael Rhodes on who's bass. Who's a long time yeah. friend of the family. Dennis, Dennis Crouch on Upright. Dennis Peter Crouch. Peter Huttlinger played acoustic Peter. guitar. Um, yeah, John Gardner Amazing. played drums. It, and know, Jed Lieber. Jed Lieber did some uh, organ, he, B3. He did organ yeah. overdubs, wow. and Kevin McKendry played piano. Oh, Kevin too. Oh, yeah, that's great. It's, it's pretty serious band. Yeah, they're, that, that's, all those guys are, I mean, they're, they're so great. I was just back there with uh, Michael, in fact. Uh, they were doing a new, uh, oh, it's like a reality show called Signed. Mm. And uh, producer Jimmy, he was... Uh, excited so they had me come in I played with Brent Mason and Michael right. and stuff and wow. I did a solo over one of the songs and everything Seymour is an so amazing cool. guitar player. I, I love I have fun playing yeah but I I, I I like playing and the part you know about being a player I started as a player and then I started making pickups when I was quite young and it was just I would hear you guys playing and and we did a tour. We did right, a part right, tour. Right, right. Eighty four. Eighty four. Um, George Terry. George Terry. Uh, Steve Ripley. Steve Ripley. Uh, Ron Tunks. And Chuck DeMonica. Ch yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it, it was it was great. We had a good time. It was amazing. I, I see. I had no idea. I knew about your pickups and how great yeah. they were. And then 
I realized the the man behind the pickups was a great player, and so oh, we have that, 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 that's pretty much you pretty much almost have to be. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's how I started. And I I grew up, you know, playing um, in Wildwood and Atlantic City right, and Ocean the City, Jersey Shore, the Jersey Shore days. So the man I'm, knows what a real uh, cheesesteak uh, is, right? Right. <laughs> <Real> cheese <laughs> October first, I'm going back to playing a show. I'm playing a show in Ocean City, New Jersey. Are you really with my blues band? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, so great. Funny, funny you'd say that. Man. So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. When I was a kid. There was um, those electro harmonics, like modules that you plug in the oh, it, in, 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 in the, the guitar, guitar right, right into the amp, and then you plug in the guitar cable into that. It was kind of like the first stuff. We used to have the boss tone, or what was it? You plug into your guitar. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. This little black box, yeah, and, yeah. and you plug into that. Yeah. I, I discovered something early on that uh, if I plugged in through my uh, my, my parents' web core oh, uh, tape, tape recorder, recorder, it had that little tube That's VU right. meter, right? Oh, it but if I just cranked around. it up and then plugged into my Princeton, yeah, I could get that distorted tone, That's like it, that Leslie man. West That's kind it, of tone man. and oh. stuff. I was like, ah. and that, that was my parents thing, what are you, you know? doing? <laughs> <laughs> we were all looking for that sound back there, you know? Yeah. A quest for tone. A quest for tone. And, you know, I was trying to see all the bands I could, and I would go to Philadelphia all the time. And uh, But I knew Little Pal. Yeah. I used to go watch him all the time. So that was Daryl playing with him, probably. He, back Daryl sang, he sang in the band, and then Lenny Pakula. Lenny Pakula. Was the, uh, was the keyboard player. Wow. He played, he played B3. B3? Yeah. Oh, man. How about that? that, that that's a great... The B3, though. I mean, yeah. Having a B3 in your band is... is it cats me out, man. I'll tell you. It's still it's carry it. It, it still it, is. It still is. It really it is. You know? is. Yeah. yeah. And you'll hear some of the stuff I've done with a B3, and I just, I just really love it, you know. But, you know, what? who was your influences back there around the Philadelphia area? You know, I was like, it's so funny. I always like to joke. I was, I'd, I'd be one night, I'd be wearing like a shark skin suit and playing R&B and, yeah. and early rock with a, with a band, like a combo. And then I'd I'd be I'd be in a folk club playing like acoustic guitar and doing folk blues and, wow. and to this day I'm still doing the exact so same thing. So you're kind of the same. Really? I'm folk doing to the, the bunk, exact man. same thing. That's great. Right. I go you <laughs> know play, so play with yeah. Daryl and, and the whole a great Hall and Oates band and you know it's, it's an amazing band and we do the, that pop stuff and the rock and it's fun and then I go to my blues band and it's a whole different world and I do a lot of solo acoustic stuff. Oh, that's great. You know, so it's it's great balance yeah. for me. I, I like I like both things because yeah. they're both you know, they're different but yet they're the same. So. Yeah. yeah. Pete Hewlett, Sweet Lightning okay. from back there. He was from out of Pittsburgh. Wow. And uh, so really so much came from Pittsburgh. Uh, I mean from uh, from the, that area, Philly, this Oh yeah, it was incredible. Well, area. you know you had yeah. the, you had the Uptown Theater. That's right. And yeah. at the Uptown Theater, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I used to go there as a kid. And I saw all the great early R and B performers as they came through every weekend, every Saturday oh, night, that's cool. yeah. and just one after the other, you know. And then, like I said, the, the second fret. Oh yeah, okay. The folk club, yeah, and folk then, clubs and, and folk festival and stuff. It was just main point yeah. out in out on the main line there. Uh, I saw all the great early, you know, blues performers that were being rediscovered. You know, Mississippi John Hurt. Oh, that's great. And uh, that's you great. know, Doc Watson and those guys. It and became all, the you know, sound of pop radio in a way because I'm, yeah. you know, a couple years. Younger, uh, but I would listen to the. Uh, I'd be listening a to pop radio. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I was. I remember because I my dad's an opera singer, and we really? moved to Germany oh, uh, when I was about wow. nine years old. And I, I would cling to anything American, but I'd listen to pop radio, and uh, in you know the Armed Forces Network would play oh, you right. know, a lot yeah. of like the, uh, you know this early '70s pop. Uh, yeah. You know, pop radio was really it was Philly soul. Yeah. Well, but you know, the stylistics, you had the, uh, the Carol Melvin, the blue, Melvin and the blue Notes. Yeah. You, had, you had a very unique thing going on. You, got a, you had pop radio playing all pop songs and R&B or whatever, but you also had underground radio just <laughs> starting. That's right. And yeah. you had the, the whole idea that a DJ could come on and play anything they wanted. It was their show yeah. and their personality they were putting out there. And so you'd hear like that. the most obscure... FM's stuff on FM. That's right. Like Philly had, you know, WMMR. Uh, MMR. It was one of the first underground yeah. radio. And I used to go, I remember Daryl and I used to go in the middle of the night to the Gene Shea show on a Sunday night. Oh, okay. Gene yeah, Shea, yeah, he's yeah. still on the air, man. Is he? Wow. Yeah, I saw him the yeah. other day. And he would play the most obscure stuff you could ever imagine. And then we'd go on there with acoustic guitar and a mandolin or whatever, and we'd play, play songs in the middle of the night. That's cool. Really Incredible. Yeah. Here's a good one. 
I worked with Frank Virtue at Frank Virtue okay. Studios. <laughs> With, <laughs> with it's like blowing my mind. Like, with James <laughs> Bruno. Wait a minute. James like, Bruno. I cut my first record at Virtue Studios on Broad Street. You're kidding, really? It, it was called I Need Your Love by the Masters, and we wow. were in there with wow. my high school band, and Frank Virtue engineered it. Frank Virtue engineered it, yeah. yeah. He was a great, he showed Guitar me Boogie it. Shuffle. Guitar Boogie Shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, that was fantastic. And James Bruno, uh, Jimmy right. Bruno, who's right. a great jazz oh, player. Oh, man. Today. He's a great that, that was his dad. That's that, just. That okay. played Guitar Boogie Shuffle. You know, okay. which is incredible. Yes. You know, pretty Frank neat. Virtue and the Virtues. Frank Virtue and the Virtues, you know. Wow. And I recorded okay. it at Sound Plus Studios. See, well, I had no idea we were going down this road. <laughs> this is like, yeah, oh I mean, boy. Just, just, I thought, I mean, I, I love that history. You know, I, wow. I just really do. And, uh, well, we're very proud to have you here in Santa Barbara. And nice I'm so glad you. that you, you came by. I mean, this is, for me, and Mr. Paul, I mean, I, I love this guy. And he's, he's yeah, been a good man. friend for years. And, Thank you. Yeah. And I uh, appreciate it. You too, too, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's great to see you, well, Seymour. Thank you, bud. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, folks. Mm -hmm.